Um, have, you know, have you looked into, uh, thank you. Have you looked into um, changes in the composition of the membranes themselves, like um, in certain conditions? You know, have you studied like the change in the membranes? Um, you know, because I know that there's a difference in people who have autism, for example. And what pathology will thicken the membrane? And so what <clears throat> kind of condition do you think will thicken the membrane? Inflammation. Inflammation. So what are you thinking? Who? What kind of inflammation people have? Um, well, I didn't know if, you know, any kind of meningitis, obviously. That's it. Meningitis is very common. People with meningitis, you have a lot of people with meningitis. That's good. Inflammation from meningitis or any other kind of um, virus or bacteria. Allergy to the dye that they inject sometime in your spinal cord. If you have a reaction to the dye, then you're going to have arachnoiditis or meningitis, something like that. Number two, second category, trauma. So concussion, you're going to have probably inflammation, and then the trauma is going to have a, a, a fibro fibrosis of the membrane. Number three, surgery. Well, obviously, if you open your cranium, it's going to get scar tissue. Number four. What else comes in mind? Bleeding. Bleeding. If you have a trauma, a surgery, or you know, about 20% about of the of the stroke have, are bleeding or less, you know, are bleeding strokes. Uh number five would be oh, oh go ahead. I took the BMTA class, so I was wondering because you talked about how people could have their own scarring just from exposure to something that have a yes. reaction. Yes, but that's that's a little bit harder to feel. You know, it's not as obvious as when you have a surgery and trauma. Those are very obvious. Sometimes it's a little bit more subtle, but I was thinking more CP, lack of oxygen at birth. Mm -hmm. So cerebral palsy and all those trauma or lack of oxygen in general would thicken the membrane, right? Mm -hmm. So CP have very tight membrane. Um, autism, not necessarily, but they could. And autism, as I said, you start very gentle, very light. And later on, you apply heavy pressure because they like it. But mm -hmm. at the beginning, they're afraid of you. So you don't want to jump on them and squeeze them. And emotional trauma, yes, you can have some strong tension in your body. It can affect your membrane and safe, you know, I'm unsafe and I need to protect mm -hmm. myself and you are armoring your body. And so I just give you ideas. There's more, many more. Those are very common cause of thickening of the membrane that's palpable, easily palpable. You can make miracle with CP. And actually, if you go on YouTube and type chickly and palsy, you'll feel some kids and one session, 15, 20 minutes, you do this, you do this kind of technique and you see they begin to walk. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, you don't know why. One more thing also, you know what? MS. MS, when they are paralyzed, you don't know what to do for motor uh, dysfunction. You'd be amazed. You just do that and they couldn't move for a few years and they begin to move their legs again. They will cry in front of you or their arms again. They can, they can use their hand again. They will cry because this is what you can help them for.